Jess and welcome to my channel and for today's video I am going to talk about the top 10 culture shocks that I've experienced this is based from my own opinion um, based on my own experience and my observation here in the US all right so I came from a little city in the Philippines these are really um, a big shock for me. So I have 10 items. Actually, there's a lot, but um, I pick the top 10 that um, really, really amaze me and shock me. All right. So let's start with number 10. Okay. And I actually have a list, so I won't forget. For me, um, the number 10 is the transportation here in the U.S., I'm really amazed because um, there are huge variety of vehicles. When I was in the Philippines, I've only known cars like Honda, Toyota, Isuzu, Mitsubishi, um, what else? Hyundai. Though I've heard of Mercedes-Benz and BMW, but I've never really seen them in actual. But here in the U.S., like I said, even um, a regular casino worker or... A restaurant worker they can own a bmw some people that works where i work they have corvette you know um chevrolet so you know i'm really amazed with this moving on to my number nine all right so my number nine is the terminologies um the accent and the pronunciation all right so as you know i am married to an American man and there are so many um, pronunciation that you know like oh my god I never thought I have to pronounce it like that you know even though I heard from my husband and other people like for example my guest and my co-workers that um, you know I speak English good but I still find it so hard sometimes, like, you know, for some of the terminologies or some of the pronunciation, there are still, um, and their accent, you know, sometimes, there are still words that, you know, it's so hard for me to pronounce. All right, I'll give you an example. And I've heard this many times to other YouTubers as well, um, especially from the Philippines. Like, for example, um, comfortable so they will pronounce or we we pronounce it before back then when i was in the philippines we pronounce it as comfortable right but my husband was like what what, what did you say <laughs> he did not understand because they pronounce it here as comfortable all right so <laughs> that's um one one thing that i've learned okay so another example is button or cotton you know, they pronounce it here like button or cotton. Like that's that's how their accent is. And then I was so shocked and surprised and amazed like, oh, OK, <laughs> that's not how I should pronounce it. And and I've learned a lot, you know, especially from my husband. And also some of the terminologies that we use in the Philippines, like, for example, comfort room, right? We are used to say it like, you know, comfort room or CR, right? But here, um, they they generalize it like bathroom. All right, I have to go to the bathroom. Even though there's no bathtub in there, there's only toilet. And it means that, you know, they wanted to go pee or, or the number two. So... Even though, like, you know, <laughs> there's no bathtub, people are saying, okay, I'm going to go to the bathroom instead of, like, saying restroom or comfort room. But they don't usually say it comfort room here. I think the best um, word to say is, all right, I'm going to go to the restroom, right? Um, but like I said, a lot of people are saying, um, I'm going to the bathroom. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so that's my number nine. My number eight is the return and exchange policy. All right, as we all know, in the Philippines, it's very rare or almost nothing. And it's very impossible that once you buy a, a goods, you can return it and exchange for something else. I don't know right now, but when I was there, it never maybe you can change it but um 
it has to be like all right when you buy it today the next day if the shoes or for example shoes or clothes doesn't fit you you can return it if you have as long as you have your receipt most of the time most like um, department store or um, supermarket they don't do return and exchange policy but here in the US yes they do right so the return and exchange policy here in the US for most of like supermarkets or um, department stores like um, Walmart, Kohl's, Macy's, um, JCPenney, and even Amazon, you know, if you're not satisfied of what you bought and if you have like, for example, found something else somewhere that it's cheaper than, than, you know, than that store where you bought the items for the most part, Yes, you can return it, especially um, within 90 days. I'll give you an example. This just happened this year. So my husband bought me online at Walmart online, seven pairs of sweatpants because, you know, winter is coming. So, and I don't remember what is my size. And I just told him, I think I am um, large petite, you know. So he ordered seven large petite. And then when they come and I fit it and it's too big and I... And I was like, oh my God, it's too big. So we put it back on the packaging and we initiate a return through Walmart. And yes, they accept it. And they sent me the correct size that I need. So that's how easy it is to have a return. And I am very happy because if I cannot return those and those are seven pairs and it doesn't fit me, what am I going to do with it, right? It really makes sense, you know, that... They allow you to return it. In a way, they can still sell it. You know, I did not, I did not ruin it or whatsoever. So that's very convenient on our part, and and we save money instead of just spending it and buying another one just because this doesn't fit. You know, and that's really a good thing, guys. All right, so that was my number eight. Let's proceed to the number seven. My number seven culture shock is the traffic law. You know, their traffic law is very strict. In a way, I think it is very good, especially the speed limit. You know, in school zone, like for example, there, there are classes, especially Monday to Friday. Don't be surprised that there is a flashing light and it's saying that 15 miles per hour when light is flashing, which is really good. And, um... You know, that's for the safety of everybody, especially if there are kids that are walking across, you know, the, the pedestrian lane. And to me, that is really good initiative. Um, in the Philippines, I haven't seen any, even though there are signs that is school zone, still people are speeding. Here, like, if you are in the freeway and the speed limit is 65 and you're doing like 30, you can be pulled over by the cop because you're doing so slow. And if you go over like 100, good luck to you. I hope there's a cop up ahead and will pull you over. So that's the good thing right here, guys. I'm so amazed and I'm so shocked, which is, you know, really good because it's for everybody's safety. All right, so that was my number seven. So my number six is how people work out here and go for a walk. You know, how they work out. So here in the US, guys, even though you've seen a lot of um, big American people because the way they eat, but there are also a lot of people that loves to go to the gym to stay in shape or go for a walk. Like every morning here, like because I work at night, so every time I go home, I've seen a lot of people, you know, on the street or in the parks, you know, walking, running, bicycling. Um, they really love to stay in shape. I remember one day, I, I think, I don't know, I was little. So there's a foreigner who lives in town and he used to walk, you know, he used to walk in the morning or or every time he go to a supermarket or a store, he will walk. And I remember my father and my mother talking one day that, you know, my father said that, oh, this, this foreigner, I've heard that this foreigner is very cheap because he doesn't ride at all. He doesn't ride a tricycle. He bought his own bike. He's just going to go biking, you know. People are talking about him because he's cheap because he doesn't... They think that he's cheap because he doesn't want to pay for for the ride of the tricycle or a jeepney. 
But the thing is, that's not the case, you know. <laughs> he goes for a walk because he wanted to stay in shape, you know. So when I came here, now I understand that it's not because they cannot afford to pay the tricycle or the jeepney, but it's because they wanted to stay in shape. A lot of American people, guys, go for a walk every single day because they wanted to stay in shape. All right. So I just want to clear it to everybody too. Like if you've seen somebody there in the Philippines and walking, unless if you know that he is really homeless or he doesn't have, you know, any money anymore and he's walking, it's not because, you know, he doesn't or he cannot afford to pay, but he's staying in shape and which is a really good exercise, guys. You know, if I only have the time, I will go for a walk every single day. All right. So that's my number six. So let's proceed to my number five. Okay, so all right, my number five is the different kinds of homes or houses here in the U.S. Um, I know in the Philippines, you know, I've seen like condo, apartment. If you're rich, you have a mansion. You live in the, you know, in the high-end subdivision or development. You live in the countryside, you have a little house or a regular house. Here in the U.S., um, I've seen like different kinds of houses, all right? So there are regular houses, you know, like like us, we have regular house, um, you know, as a regular, you know, worker. So we have regular house and then some people live in an apartment or a condo or high rises or um, there are also people, the, the rich people lives, you know, in private, whatever, in a private um, development. Um, they, are, they have mansions there. But um, what I've seen here that I've never seen in the Philippines is or are the mobile homes, the motor homes, the like the trailer, you know, the RVs. You can live in an RV. And then RV means recreational vehicles. And in fact, um, we have one, though it's not brand new. Um, we bought it in 2017 or 18, I guess. We bought it like, I think we are the third owner. So it amazed me because this RV or recreational vehicle has its own um, bedroom, it's bathroom, kitchen, a little living room, or a dining table. So it really amazed me because I haven't seen this in the Philippines. And here in the U.S., it's very common. It's very popular. Like, you know, people will just park. If they have a motorhome or an RV, they will just park, you know, in, in like an RV park. And they can live there for whatever, one year or months. And, you know, guys, it's so nice. It's so nice to have that. It's very um, convenient, you know, um, for you to go places. And you don't have to rent or, or stay in the hotel, you know. And you can actually live in there. You know, that really amazed me. And those are really nice. So that's my number five. Let's proceed with my number four, all right? So um, my number four is... The outfits or the fashion style here in the US oh so when I arrived here so my husband brought me to downtown Las Vegas and it was my first time to see um, you know like in the city uh, ladies or even men um, you know working <laughs> that's their job like you know people will take a picture of them and then them wearing a two-piece you know it's very rare in the philippines guys that you will see a person wearing two-piece on the street really in the city i'm still shocked even though now that i'm working in a hotel casino um especially summertime guys there are so many women wearing just very plunging and you know almost naked they're almost naked, you know, walking on the casino floor, walking on the street. Yes, it's very common, guys. So if you come here in the U.S. and if you come here, visit Las Vegas, don't be surprised that you'll see, you know, <laughs> women wearing um, two-piece on the street. 
all right so that's my number four okay so let's proceed to my number three my number three guys that really shocked me is the accessibility to restrooms or the toilet papers here in the US. So everywhere you go, there are restrooms. Like for example, you go to a supermarket or a department store or even a small restaurant. Um, they have restrooms, you know, it's so easy to access it, guys. So every restroom has a toilet paper, toilet seat cover, hand soap so you know you really have to wash your hands and then a paper towel or or an air dryer to dry your hands and to me that is so amazing guys because in the philippines even you go to a uh, big malls like a very you know high-end malls though they have restrooms but they don't have a free toilet paper i remember i always have to bring my own like wet wipes and uh, or maybe tissue to you know to wipe myself or to clean myself every time i go to um restroom because they don't have it they don't provide it but here in the u.s guys it is mandatory so you don't have to worry guys if you go to you know parks or department stores or or you know supermarket food shopping because they have restrooms and they provide those necessities you know which really makes sense and i'm so happy and glad about it my number two guys is the food and the food portion yes the portion of the food because here their food are so so big like you know their burgers some burgers are like this high like oh my god how am i gonna eat this and then like for example um steak their steak is like most of the steak a good steak is this thick you know and um most of the time <laughs> me and my husband go out or with the kids and have some lunch or dinner we always end up having a leftover that you know we can bring home because you know the variety of food guys and the portion of food they're really you know big huge no wonder there are so many americans that are you know big <laughs> big also usually it's not good for one person sometimes it's good for two or three people you know even in one order so i am so shocked with that guys <laughs> you know but their food are really good i must admit you know i have i have tried food here that i've never tried in the philippines all right so <laughs> that's my number two so my number one guys are the people so generally people here guys are very friendly and very welcoming you know they're very helpful to you and you know they're very kind people will say something randomly like hey are you okay is there anything else that i can help you with you know like things like that like really uh, you know i really appreciate it like you know oh even though i'm only like this you know he or she recognizes me they will say like bye have a nice day or bye have a good one you know yeah that i am really you know surprised and shocked like how warm people here and a lot of people here also guys are very generous and thoughtful so those are my top 10 guys please share your thoughts just comment down below all right if you like this video please hit like share comment and don't forget to subscribe Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!